Welcome to the Empowered Spirit Show. This is your host, Terry Ann Hyman. I'll explore the connection to the human spirit in a way that helps to navigate your life, including crisis. I am passionate about helping you to open up to your intuition and the metaphysical world of spirit to find your confidence in your own inner guidance. Take a pause, be inspired, learn ways to show up focused, centered, and more dynamic in your everyday life. Welcome back to the Empowered Spirit Show. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining me today. This episode is being sponsored by Ritual and Shelter. Are you looking for a magical place to shop and hold space? Check out Ritual and Shelter online or in Homewood, Alabama. Browse through their bookshelves covering topics such as energy healing, crystal healing, Reiki, chakras, auras, the Akashic Records, shadow work, astrology, and earth-based healing. You can also find herbal teas and tinctures along had their crystals and oils to help establish a mindful mindset in fluid ambience before meditation, ritual work, and reflection. Ritual and Shelter is dedicated to providing one-on-one in-depth conversations with customers to help them find the most efficient healing methods and resources that match their unique interest and energy. They offer tarot sessions, Reiki sound bowl, and crystal healing, and now they are offering witch consultations. Visit RitualShelter.com to book an appointment and bring peace back to the body, mind, and spirit. You can also find them on Instagram at Ritual Shelter Shop, as well as Pinterest at Ritual Plus Shelter. This podcast goes to air. It's been a very busy week in the cosmos. It really has. So much shifting around, so much going on, so many energetic downloads of energy. I mean, that really big one was 1212, that portal of energy. 12 is about prosperity. And there's a spiritual aspect to it too, of being in that vibration of energy. And the meditation I like to lead during that time is activating the light body, activating the ability to move into that column of light, right between imagining 12. You can do it as a sacred geometry energy if you want, or just imagining the numbers too. They hold weight. And going into that energy and feeling that abundance, that joy, there's an energy of joy in there as well. You can access that energy, create joy molecules. We also have a full moon coming in Saturday, Sunday, this weekend with Gemini energy. Gemini opens up the mental, it opens up the mind. And with that also being ruled by Mercury and Mercury coming through and stationing direct. It's almost like we have like a little resetting, recalibration we've been talking about for this month recalibrating our energy, recalibrating our path. And we could do that. When we start to work in these realms of possibility and open up to these energetic sound and crystals and lights and numbers, crystal energy, especially all of this energy, we bring it forward. We can access so much more information and make changes. We really can. We can make changes in our path. That's why having a spiritual practice in the Akashic realm, something I've been talking about, is so valuable right now. In the Akashic realm, I'm going to share a story, a really vulnerable story about one of my experiences and one of my healings, because I have a lot of things coming forward this next week or two into the new year because of working in this deep way of our soul, working through those imprints, those things that hold us back. You know, lots of times... We say one thing and we really want another. Or we say that we want this, yet we really don't. Or deep within us is an energy that is stuck from past life, from other opportunities that keeps you from being able to really get out and do what you want. And so often, you know, we turn to other things and we give up. We say, forget it. I can't do it. And we start judging ourselves and blaming ourselves. But... When we work in the Akashic realm, we are able to open up to this energetic plane, this vibration, right? Medicine of the future, sound, color, light, breath, all of this helping us to access deep soul energy. Where do you think your soul resides? It's not in the body. When our body drops, our soul continues on. So that realm of possibility, it is up here in the higher chakras of energy, what I teach, And it allows you to create that space for your own shifting of energy, your own healing. It really is so amazing what we can do, right? We have a lot of energy with Neptune and the cosmic forces. Neptune is our dreams, all right? Our dreams are so important. Earlier this week, I drew a card on my Akashic Weekly Papers about 
it was seven of cups. But the energy that came to me about that energy was like, yes, let's be in our imagination. Let's be creative. Let's open up to the possibility. Lots of times when that card comes up, it's like, oh, quit being so dreamy. Like come back to earth. Yes, we need to bring it into the earth. So I will add that into the meaning of that card. Take those dreams, bring it through. Creativity is so needed right now. I'm an artist of the spirit. I talked about this last week. My sole purpose, artist of the spirit. And how I choose now to live that out every day aligns with the life purpose that I'm working with too. Very fascinating. If you didn't hear last week's soul purpose, definitely go back and check it out. So having a spiritual practice in the Akashic realm feels differently versus being on the earth and trying to sit in meditation and try. It opens up to all your spiritual tools. I do a lot of Reiki in there. There's other tools. I'm going to share my story and crystal beings light, breath, and we're working in this higher vibration of energy that moves through the higher chakras, which holds the current purpose that we have, which holds the energy of our, of our past lives and that ability to understand family generations as, as well. Then we bring it into the physical world through the body, but from those higher chakras and it's filtered, not to forget this, guys are telling me, don't forget this. It's filtered by our higher self. So we start to learn to attune and align with our higher self in which to do this work. It's very powerful. My, my upcoming training, I have another one coming up. All right, link is to be in the bios and all of that. Another training coming up, working in the realm. So I help you open up to that space, start to feel what it feels like, which will go along with my program, learning to read your Akashic Records, soul work. One of my favorites to teach, and I teach it this year because in winter, our soul goes deep. Our soul goes really in there. Our ancestral energy comes forward. That's the north. That's our dreams. That's our vision. That's the healing of being deep within the womb of who we are. I love this class. I love this work. We'll be setting up more of that energy. Check it out. You can find that information. I'll leave all the links for you. But when we can start to work in this realm, we can really work on deep healings, patterns we don't even realize right? And there's just so many ways that you can access this information once you start to learn how to work with it and trust. Trust is really big. But in the Akashic realm, there's no judgment. We don't have to sit there and shame ourselves for our soul and what we've done or didn't do. We simply allow and be in that flow of energy. And then we start showing up more and more in this realm of possibility. And then the key though is also bringing in, I do like that, because we want to bring it into the present. We want to download this information, open up into our present life. That's where we really can see it. And that's what I'm seeing with myself. So there's so many ways that you can access this information. Want more? Want to talk to me a little bit about it? Schedule a spiritual upgrade, breakthrough call with me, and we can talk about this work, what you're stuck with, or what you feel like your life has become stagnant with. And we'll talk about how this work can help you. All you really need is a little bit of desire, ability to trust and tune in to your intuitive abilities and the other energy vibrations. Yes, it is medicine of the future for sure. You can find me all over Birmingham um, this month. I'll be doing a, a full moon Reiki circle at the Yoga Lab. Great studio, beautiful downtown. You also will find me, my usual restorative yoga at the Reiki circle. Friday nights, 5 p.m., great. End your week. Honor your week. Sound, light, crystals. Okay, maybe not light because we dim the lights. Reiki, essential oil, beautiful. And then I'm going to be offering a winter solstice at the clubhouse in Birmingham on the solstice, the 12, 21, 6, 8 p.m., along with Don Cassisi. She'll be doing some yoga, put you in some poses. We're going to do a little Reiki on you. Paul Wolf will be there. Reiki master will be tending the fire. We'll have a little fire. Drink a little cacao from Chocolata. Yeah, so it's going to be a fun evening and it's a community time. I know for me, during the holidays, I can get alone by myself. So maybe you don't have a big family here or maybe you're not with your family this year and the holidays can be a little intimidating. Come join us. And even if you do, bring all your family. Come join us too. Definitely 1221. So take a breath with me. Pause for a moment because I'm going to share some valuable work that I've done, it, it gets a little bit vulnerable. It really does. But I think it's important that you can understand how powerful this work can be for all of us. So here with the bowls. Perfect fifth. Bliss molecule comes forward. 
So I am a spiritual teacher. I do a lot of private mentoring, lead classes, teach Reiki, all these many things. And I also have to be a businesswoman to do this, right? I have to be able to get visible and get out there and find people. I'm a little different, so meeting people, I guess we're all different. Meeting people face to face is very important. And getting out and talking about what I do, right? And so even though I do say I want to be visible, <clears throat> I want to be heard, I want to share my message, it wasn't happening. It really wasn't happening. I'm like, why? But I want to be visible. I want. And so I was guided into my records to talk to my guardians. Like, okay, what is going on? We can have more than one guardian. There's a main one. We'll get into that. So in the Akashic realm and in my realm of possibility, how I've been trained, how I love to work. And whenever you do any kind of mediumship, spiritual work like this, you create that foundation. And I teach you how to do that as well. So I create this foundation of what my hall looks like, how the colors are, how the sounds, how it feels when I call in my guides and my guardians. And I was asking like, why? Show me. Why do I say I want to get visible, but yet I like seem invisible? So having a little patience and sitting there, and not just one time being in there, but you know, working with my guardians, really the, the, the crux of it, the heart of it, the soul of it came forward that I was brought up in this lifetime and through my lineage to not be visible. All right, in my present life, I was kind of brought up, I was Jewish in the South, be quiet, don't step out of line, kind of keep your head down, don't be visible. And then through my generational energy, which is what I do in the Kashuk Records, going back and seeing where that lineage comes forward in the repeated patterns. So part of me showing up now, as I've been shown, was that I didn't want to, even though I know I need to, and there's a part of me that likes to be out there, talk about this work. There is, honestly. So when I started getting these messages, oh, you'll betray it, you weren't brought up to believe it, even though you want to believe it, I had to really feel that emotion. I don't feel it as much now because this is what the Akashic Records helps us with, to lessen that animation. It doesn't take it away, but to help it flow with us into the present life with shifts and changes. And as I started recognizing this, and you, you love your ancestors, they struggle for us, right? They struggle to give us the freedom to do what we do. And so you love that part of you. And there's some images I can still feel and see. You know, I always tease about being coming from, you know, Russia and actually probably the Ukraine now and Persia, right? Like, I don't, I don't know all the geography, but I'll be honest. But that area of the country, there's a little bit of a gypsy in me. I talk about it. I bring my bowls, I bring my cards, I bring my wares, right? And so some of that too is how I show up and how that can come in to be that energy of vibration. So that's really kind of where it started in the energy of seeing myself there, going back further and further and further and seeing how I could break some of this, I like to call it animation. I know early on when I studied with Carolyn May, she used to always call it animation when the energy kind of goes like a little jump. And so we start to love that part, start to work with it. And then one of the tools that I use to help me really rewire this. So once that emotion goes down, we can rewire the brain. We have to feel it though. It's not like, I don't know. It's not like you have to go into each of the dramas of it all and really relive it and suffer it. But you, I feel the emotional body. We bring the emotions up. We bring it into the body. We breathe through it, right? And then tapping emotional freedom comes through. So then I began to tap on the whole idea first, I'm not betraying anybody, it's okay to be visible, I love my family, things are not the same now. So first we tap on that, and once that comes down, then we start to bring up, I am okay to be visible, I can be visible, I can do this. Because we want to have that where one goes down, one comes up, and affirm that into our energy field. So all of this I learned by sitting and meditating and going into my records and using the tools that came forward. Sometimes angels come in to fill your heart with love. I got a lot of that, a lot of forgiveness in the heart there, Cassiel, just lots of forgiveness, right? Sarah comes in, just ease and effortless to her, just move through it. And that's what we learn to work with and recognize as we set up that realm of possibility. It's beautiful, it's fun, it's very empowering. I have a few opportunities 
Like even with this podcast, I could have some big changes coming in the new year. Very excited. That's a call later for today. Even in my local community, leaving, leading some new groups. So this is the possibility. Just take a deep breath. Think about it for you. What is that possibility that you want to break through with? This is the time. Bring that energy into you as we take a moment, move into a meditation, help you begin to set up how it feels to be in the Akashic Records and ask, ask for a message. You can ask for a message like, what is blocking me? What is that discrepancy in my energy field? Because that's what it was for me, a little discrepancy. Said one thing, but yet another was happening. And let's begin. Closing the eyes if you can. Taking a nice deep inhale, breathing up through the body. Exhale, breathing all the way down. Calling in the element of fire. Fire inspires the spirit, the soul to come forward. Fire helps for that transformation, transmutation of energy. Seeing that spark, seeing that color, seeing the smoke now. Calling in the energy of fire, which comes into now air. Clearing the mind, clearing the space. Breathe. Slowing down. Pausing. Take another deep inhale, breathing up the body. And exhale, call all your energy into you. Allowing the spiritual body to begin to align right on top of the mental, the emotional, the mental planes. Centering. Inhale, expanding the breath up the body. And exhale, dropping right into the heart, right into the deepest part of your heart. Feel that connection, your spirit and the greater spirit. Know that you are loved, guided, protected, feeling all this energy coming in around us as we go to set up this sacred space to do this work. Notice in your own surroundings how you can create this energy through your aura, through your breath. Imagine crystals in each corner. Go ahead and set that up for you. Crystals will hold that vibration all around. And then we begin to activate that breath. Here we are inside that circle, that square of crystals. I like to look at as circles, each corner all around us. And bring that breath all the way up. Opening up through the higher self. Call in your higher self if it's not already present for you. And then exhale, bringing it all the way back through, calling in just absolute light, streams of grace, moving through the higher self, the higher chakras, into the chakras of the body, out through the feet, deep into the earth. We open up this channel of light. Inhale, breathing up the body. And exhale, breathing all the way down. Moving into that gamma consciousness as we slow down. Inhale, breathing up the body. And exhale all the way back down. And now we open from the heart, opening up through the aura, expanding from the heart, front, side, back, side. Exhale, breathing all that right back into the heart. And again, inhale, expanding all around you, opening up this energy. And exhale right back into the heart. Returning to that vertical breath, breathing up the body. And exhale all the way back down. Allow your energy to follow this breath. Inhale, breathing up, moving through those higher chakras, through the higher self, into this realm, moving through this veil of roses. And just asking permission. For those that are here listening now or later, asking permission to reach into this etheric energy, your energy, your soul, your records. We move into this room of possibility. Now just start to imagine. Maybe you're familiar with this and we call back in. We want to have that familiarity. What does 
this great library of energy look like, feel like, smell like, taste like? What are all the senses doing as you open up to this energy? Imagine, see yourself in this library of light. See the white light, see the golden light, see all the colors, and then start to look for the details. The halls, the books, the doors. How does it show up for you? And as you start to feel this realm of possibility, notice it, see it, hear it, call in your guardian. Call in your guardian and ask. This question that you've come forward with, we always come with the question. And as you get really, really quiet, notice. Notice the messages. Already sensing Archangel Faith coming forward, just to remind us of the freedoms we have and our dreams, our imaginations, and the light of our soul. Feel that vibration for you. Our messages come in many different ways. You can ask though. Ask for the words to express. Ask, show me more, tell me more. You can ask. But then notice, trust. And if a message has come to you, you can even ask, okay, then next step. What tools do I already know, do I already have? My breath, meditation, Reiki, crystals, tapping. What do I already have that can help reinforce these messages in my physical realm, my everyday life? receive those messages right into your heart maybe you're gifted a crystal being garnets garnets get it done call in those crystal beings for you take a breath allow yourself to be in this hall of light your light, your soul. Maybe you see books, maybe you see ladders, maybe you see plants. Maybe you see just lights lit up. It is creative. It is imaginative. It is vibration of your soul. Take another moment or two and bring these messages in. Ask. Just ask. Ask for a sign. Ask for the presence of energy. Ask. Next step. Show me. When we speak to our soul and our guides, they don't lie to us. They give us the truth. We just don't judge it. That's the beauty of working in this higher vibration of light, in this higher consciousness. You can call it gamma consciousness if you want to call it something. Realm of possibility. Take another deep inhale. And exhale all the way down, deep into the heart, all this information, thanking the guardians, the guides, the angels, the colors, the crystal beings, anybody and everything and everyone that showed up for you. It's all energy. It's all vibration. Thank it. Gratitude lifts up vibration, offers gratitude, amplifies the energy as well. Receive this into your heart. As we start to bring that awareness and move all the way back down through the veil of roses, coming back into the present moment, feel your feet on the earth. Exhale all the way down. And as you do, just imagine all this information coming in. Downloads, knowledge, your soul, your light. Inhaling and exhaling. The heart is open. Feel that third eye buzzing. And as you're ready, blink in the eyes, back open, coming back. Just sending a little Reiki out as well. Just holding this light, holding this vibration so you can return to it. That's how we rewire the brain, lifting the vibration, returning this feeling, this light, this joy. 
Take another deep breath, just sealing it in. Shokurei, 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 as we say in Reiki, all the way down, deep into the earth. Notice, right now, notice how you feel. Perhaps a little lighter, a little calmer, a little bit more joy. Come join me on my next training for more of this work. You can learn to do this. It is a spiritual practice. It's not just go, let me retrieve a record and move on. No, it helps you with through amusement, through getting in the other part, the creative faculty, the intuitive part of your brain. Intuition grows. You start shifting energy. Opportunities start showing up. Notice, just notice how your day goes by being in this vibration of light. Happy holidays, everyone. Don't be alone. Reach out, make a phone call, text if that's what you need to do. But there are so many events going on. I know not just in my city, but wherever you are. Take the chance to get out a little bit more. Open your heart. We are all connected. Thanks again for listening. This is your host, Harry Ann Hyman. To your spirit. Namaste. Namaste.